This is the Glenn Ford Report on the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Eric Holder, the former U.S. Attorney General, will return to his law firm that he left five years ago to join the Obama administration. And now we are going to get Glenn Ford's take on all of this and his track record. And Glenn, as you know, is the executive editor of the Black Agenda Report. Glenn, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, Glenn, what do you make of his return to the law firm? Well, Eric Colder says that uh, he's coming home by returning to that high-powered, uh, top draw corporate uh, law firm. And I think that's probably true. That is his ideological home, as well as the firm that he worked for uh, from 2001 until when President Obama named him to be the attorney general. Eric Holder is the classic example of the corporate lawyer, the guy who moves through the revolving door between uh, representing the ruling class in private practice, like at Covington and Burling, and then serving their interests while he's in the government. Uh, as the top lawyer for the federal government and as, and I think this is just as important, an intimate friend of the current president, Holder will now be allowed to become rich as well as to serve the rich. Uh, if, for example, uh, President Obama succeeds in getting his Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Rigging Treaty uh, passed through the Congress, well, there will Eric Holder be, right there at Covington and Burling, uh, in a good, good position to help his clients to ship more U.S. jobs overseas and to beat down any nation that wants to stand in the way of the rule of money in the world, because that is what Covington and Burling <coughs> uh, serve, the rule of money. They've got offices all over. They've got offices in New York and, and Berlin and Beijing and Shanghai and in South Korea and in Brussels. And they have a very special relationship with the uh, country of Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Eric Holder already has lots of experience on the dark side of international corporate relations. Uh, the last time that he returned to Covington and Burling, uh, that was after serving as the uh, deputy attorney general in Bill Clinton's administration. Uh, Holder used that opportunity to influence the government to get his client, Chiquita Banana, uh, their operations in, in uh, Colombia uh, to get the crimes that they've been involved in, uh, the murder by death squads, which were under the pay uh, of uh, Chiquita Banana and uh, other U.S. corporations, uh, to get Chiquita Banana off with a fine. Uh, and, and that really is uh, the trademark of Eric Holder. Uh, no matter what you do, if you're killing uh, peasants in Colombia or you're killing the economy of the United States, uh, you will get off with a fine if Eric Holder has anything to do with it. Uh, he, of course, is famous for indicating uh, that the largest banks in the country are just too big to jail. Uh, but that's not a new thought on his uh, part. <clears throat> he actually came up with the formula for that uh, back in 1999 uh, when he was making his bones under uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, he circulated a memo that basically said uh, to his uh, compatriots uh, in the Justice Department that corporations should be fined instead of being criminally prosecuted uh, so that there would not be collateral damage uh, to the economy. So when he became attorney general and uh, uh, this huge capitalist crisis uh, occurred, uh, he already had the formula. Uh, let them get away with everything, no criminal prosecutions, uh, just find them, and not too much that it will uh, hurt. Uh, Eric Holder has no respect for the law. He only has respect for power. Uh, it was his duty uh, to explain uh, President Obama's preventive detention uh, legislation. He had to explain uh, why a, a bill uh, that uh, would allow people to be put in uh, prison 
uh, without trial, uh, without any access to the courts, uh, was not an infringement on the principle of due process of law. And all Eric Holder did was mumble something about, well, due process doesn't really mean that everybody has to get their day in court. And it's that kind of mentality that makes Eric Holder such a great asset uh, to people like uh, Covington and Burling. Uh, I'm sure that they will make great use of him and all of his nefarious contacts inside and outside of the federal government. Glenn, what I thought was the most pathetic about this uh, resign well, his, his departure and the announcements related to his departure is that the law firm itself had issued a number of press releases that um, and news outlets like NBC just took and quoted and repeated almost as if it was an advertisement for people to use the law firm and uh, so uncritically covering it. Your thoughts on that? Well, when you look at uh, television today, you're looking into the bowels of a corporation. So it should not be strange to see corporations uh, speaking in their own language and uh, treating as earth-shaking events uh, things like the hiring of, of a new uh, high-powered lawyer. Glenn, uh, after having a DOJ that's black and a president that's black, uh, this country remains racially divided uh, more than it has been in decades. Uh, what do you think of that, and what do you think uh, he could have done in order to address this? Well, many things could be done, such as prosecuting police who murder black people in the street. But of course, uh, that's off limits for a corporate president and his administration. Uh, and and it, is, it is amazing uh, that uh, there, there seems to be some kind of a corporate media consensus that this guy, Eric Holder, has been such a boon uh, for civil rights, uh, for black folks, uh, uh, a, for reform in the criminal justice system. When when nothing of the kind has happened. The biggest thing that he's done is attacked is attack the very principle of due process of law, uh, which weakens and destroys uh, everybody's uh, civil rights. In terms of the uh, criminal justice system and supposed reforms, all we've seen uh, is very small executive orders emanating from this administration. Uh, that is, uh, the attorney general told his uh, federal prosecutors uh, in the spirit of prison uh, reform not to prosecute folks uh, so hard, not to demand such long uh, sentences uh, so as to uh, cut down on the long, the terribly long uh, terms that people uh, serve in American uh, prisons. Uh, but that order only lasts for the length of the administration. It has no life uh, afterwards. It changes nothing uh, structurally. Uh, it's just a, a kind of propaganda uh, for uh, the Obama administration. When it comes to shaping law, as the New York Times reported, uh, this Eric Holder Justice Department, just like the ones before it, consistently and, in fact, with at every opportunity that it uh, is allowed, uh, that it gets to speak before the Supreme Court on the issue of police use of uh, excessive force, this uh, Justice Department, Eric Holder's Justice Department, is sided uh, with the police. And that's the kind of behavior uh, that that uh, creates uh, court precedents uh, that live way beyond my lifetime and Eric Holder's lifetime. Uh, and in that regard, there's been no reform whatsoever. So it's a big uh, charade and people imagining, as they did when Obama first uh, entered uh, the White House, imagining a kind of Justice Department rather than keeping track of its actual record. Glenn Ford, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.